Um, so, uh, we're going to talk today the Internet of Things and bring uh, machine to machine, surface to market. So, we'll talk a little bit about business today. All right? uh, I'm not sure we finished the previous, uh, previous lecture number three. Did we finish it? Do you know? We did not? No. Okay, let's just start with this. We'll go to three of this. How is that? Okay. So, all right. So, there is all the stages to bring the IoT, M2M. Um, I don't know which one is more general now. I, th I always thought that M2M is more general than IoT. But, you know, also, that's from one aspect. From the other aspect, IoT is more general because everything connected to the Internet. So, so sometimes you'll find me writing M2M, which is machine-to-machine -machine communication, which is the older name, and sometimes IoT. So it does not make any difference. It's for me the same. Let's say at least in my PowerPoint presentations. So, uh, how can you bring it to 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 the market when you have an idea, especially in your lab project, right? Or this project, if you have something, you need to bring it to the to the market. So it starts with a business application definition. Definitely, you have to define what is your application. Okay, what is the product you, that you are expected to have, and you're gonna sell to the people. Build first, develop first. Okay, and so it has to be very specific, right? Uh, and then after that, you're gonna you, you're gonna study it with a trial surface, trial surface, and you iterate. You go to the business, I mean, you, you, you do the trial surface for a certain model of the business and application definition. It does not work. It does not, does not give you a good feeling. You go back. And you check the, uh, the trial surface. You keep until you settle to something that is visible. Okay? So you have to spend some time on that. Then after that, you're going to go to where? To the implementation strategy. What is this? you know, how you, you will implement it, what are the steps, the procedures, then the design, development, and functional testing. So always we start with the design, development, and it takes a lot of time. Many people don't count for the testing, okay? So testing, with testing that you sometimes discover all your design or the way you developed your product is not going to work, all right? So testing is a very important. Let me give you an example, right? So um, you, you have a product that requires uh, antenna for communication, all right? And the antenna is like, you know, it's not internal. It's like, you know, you know, it's like um, a pole, right? So you will discover this will not be applicable at all. Or you design a device that needs antenna and the environment where it's supposed to work is noisy. So on paper, on paper, when you tested that, it worked. When you test, and where, where is the test happening? We're going to talk a whole lecture about testing. Testing where it happens. Not in the workshop. You do development and design in the workshop. Okay, initial testing in the workshop. But you have to bring it to the real life, where it's going to go to. So you get surprised how much problems and troubles you have with the device that when you bring it to the real life. I'll give you an example. So we were, at a certain point, tired, ourselves tired with, uh, with the projectors. OK, projectors connected through wire. OK, so I remember like 10 years ago, there was from NF NFLUX, I think, NFOX, I think is the name of the company. Uh, they had like a wireless, wireless projection. So basically, you plug antenna to the projector and you could connect with Wi-Fi, laptop with Wi-Fi to that. It was a failure. It did not work. It worked one time, ten times it does not work. We wasted two hundred dollars. We throw them in the garbage. Yes. No. Yeah. Okay. So not every product works in the workshop. Will work in the real environment. Okay. So sometimes testing will take more time than development in some of the. the, the so always you have to account for that. Okay. So the functional test is a very important. Regulation and certification testing. I mean, this also the government work is a very important. 
you know, if you design a device that uses wireless, for example, RF, without a certification and permission from the government, you know what will happen? You go to jail. All right? You cannot just use like a wireless uh, band, uh, you know, band or frequencies, okay, without certification. Because if you have a device that leaks, leaks, it will affect the environment around everything wireless around you. Okay? So that will be a big problem. So anything, especially if it's wireless, okay, RF or whatever, you know, who owns the, 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 the frequency, right? The government, right? right? Okay, there is like 2.4 uh, gigahertz bands and 5 point whatever available for you, but not every frequency you could use. You have to take a permission and license for it. Okay? So all of that, any device you're going to have, you're going to have regulation and certification testing. Okay? How about health? I mean, if you are, you know, transmitting wireless signal over the air with a high power, it could affect the health of the people. I'm just giving you an example. Uh, just don't limit your imagination for things. Could be health issue, could be frequency issue, could be regulation issue, it could be security issue, safety issue, could be anything, right? So always you have to check what regulation and what certification testing that you need. Then you have the production and deployment. The last thing, production, and deployment. Now you are a successful businessman, you have like a model, you have a product, okay, you're producing and selling collecting money. Okay? Even after that, there is a lot of things that you have to do. It's not the end of the story, you agree? Okay. So this is this is where you start, this is hopefully where you end. And by the way, you know you know where is Amazon started? Where? In the garage. In the Okay, Apple. Base garage. 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 Okay. All right. Next you are you are in big trouble, by the way, if you don't have a garage. garage. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know, many many big many big products are started from garage, basement. Okay, this course could be your garage. All right. All right. I wish you all the luck. So, the business application definition and, uh, and early trials. So, what you have to do, you have to test your ideas before committing to development cost. Cost, that's development. So, if the idea is not feasible, okay, you're not sure, you don't have a feeling you will succeed, don't try them, you don't waste your money. Look for something else. So, the minimum viable, you have to check what is the minimum viable product that could sell and test market features, what the market needs. Okay, you could have the greatest idea, but you know, you never have a market for it. You know, so why you need it? Okay? Not every great idea is marketable. Okay? And you'll be surprised many things that are not that great ideas and people will just, you know, buy them. Okay. Okay, this is part of it, the psychology of the people, part of it where you live. What kind of market you gonna target? Is it, you know? So for example, if you have a great, great idea for a snow shovel, but you live in Texas, <laughs> all right? So how it will work, right? Okay, you know. I mean, still you could have different market, but you know what kind of market? Okay. So if you get a manufacturer in Texas, then you have to send it to the East Coast. West Coast there is expense, which called. Shipping, right? You don't have to understand what, what you need to do, right? Warehouse, the cost, and all of that. Okay, integrate off the shelf elements. Do you have to build everything from scratch? No. Or there is a lot of things off the shelf, just like, remember the box story I'm telling you? Box, sending the box and all of that, right? Okay, let's say that you need a microcontroller, or a controller, or like, you could use Pi, it's a valve. But if, if Pi is too big for your product, can you put a Pi inside this, for example? Can you think of this, this yeah. like a size of a Pi? Too big, right? So you could yourself design the embedded system, small, or you could something off the shelf. So what do you need? Okay, all depends on your application, right? So integrate off the shelf. So pre-approved modems, for example, 
developer kid from carriers and you could have reduced functionality okay at the back end so what exactly you need to do okay so that tells you what right here what does it tell you you have to know all what is available off the shelf and you have to know what you can do by yourself and you have to wait well this, this ties into a lot of more complex issues like production quantities and so forth because your next statement down there is this proper approach will not usually be cost effective or scalable sure those two those two issues are tied absolutely all of them are tied yeah all of them yeah okay so okay uh, you know the product approach will not usually be cost effective and not scalable. I mean, so what kind of scale? What 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 scale are you looking for? Okay. And what is the cost? I mean, definitely, if if you need to to pay developers to design your own embedded system, it will cost much more than, for example, you know, having something off the shelf, or sometimes vice versa. Because if you are producing millions of the of the, of the product, okay, having a team to manufacture or to build or develop your circuit, okay, once, and then sell millions, it will be a, a more co cost effective. But what if you're, you're expecting to sell like 10,000, for example? Okay, so it's, it, it's case by case. It's a case by case, that's what will make it complex. But again, you have to be smart. The problem with many people that they don't know even these factors. Okay, by the way, this slide, this slides you will not find them anywhere. Okay, I mean, this is not from a textbook, this is from experience, from life, all right? Okay, so cost effective, okay? Then, um, proofs out of business concept. So business features needed, technical features needed, price points, all of these you have to address in your product, all right? So that tells you what, right now, what does it tell you? What kind of team you have to do? What kind of team you have? What kind you have to have? You have to have part of your team, people know business. Yeah. Market research. Oh, marketing. Yeah. Okay. Later on, you see, you, find, you need some people that know finance. All right? And that's one of the problems we as engineers, that we are not good in money, not good in finance, not good in all of these things. Okay, don't, we are not very talented. That's why I always, I tried myself, I took a few courses in MBA, okay, I needed to know accounting. All was accounting and I could not, I said, why I should continue ignorant about accounting? Let me take a course about accounting. I find it very useful. So now when, I, when I'm with accountants, I can understand what they talk about. At least, you know, at least I can, I can understand something. If you have a problem with marketing, Okay, why you have to be ignorant about marketing? This is a course that every engineer has to take. Take a course about marketing. Okay, regardless. At least when you see a commercial in the TV, you understand how it happened and why it's happening and why they chose this way. Okay, you'll understand something. You understand? Okay, and so on and so forth. Finance, all of that. So, in this country, there is no reason to continue ignorant about anything. Okay, when you feel you need to learn anything, you can subscribe to a course on the internet or attend the course in different college and learn about it. But definitely for this you need some people to help you out. So implementation strategy. Where is implementation strategy? Okay, in here. Implementation strategy, right? So what pieces do you need? Okay, is it a mobile application? Is it a server software? Do you need M2M -M gateway? Do you need a customer, a custom hardware or off-shelf hardware? What kind of carrier? Carrier API, okay, or over the top, some application that you run and also really run, so you, you, you create, you use, okay, we we'll call it over the top, okay, what do you need to do? Then what are the business and application demands? What is, what is the expected unit volume? Are you selling millions, or hundreds, or thousands, or ten of million, tens of millions? You have to know, you have to estimate that, right? Okay, what is the data characteristics? So for example, if you have a device that captures a video, a streaming video, so what kind of data, what kind of bandwidth you're gonna need? 
How it ends with? That means more money. Right? That means, you know, you understand. If you are, if you are if you're having a device that's collecting a temperature, how much bandwidth you need? How much? Very low. Okay? Remember that you are not, you are not playing by yourself anymore. If you have a device, it has to be connected to RF, to T-Mobile, to AT&T, to whatever. You are not working by yourself anymore. Okay? So you have to work, you have part of your share, part of your expense is going to go to these companies, right? So what is the data characteristics? What is the geograph uh, ge geographical considerations for your, for, okay, for, okay, for, your, for, for your application, for your device? Okay, sensors and other end equipment. You have to think about all of these things. And think about your device has to be somewhere here. It has to be communicating and such. So it, it, you can have the application domain, the network domain, the device domain. You are here, but you are basically eventually communicating with the whole world. You might even your application needs to connect with satellite. If your device is used in the desert or somewhere that you could have, like, you know, you have to know what you're doing, right? I mean, okay. I mean, some, sometimes some, you, you might ask, why I, why I would need a device that n there's no communication? Think about farms. You have things, IoT device for farms. Okay? Farms usually in far from cities, you know, mostly the communication through satellites. Right? All right, design and design, development, and functional tests. So typical ICT software development, but with four possible problems. Okay, servers, the e-commerce, the databases, operator, consoles, etc. I mean, collecting data will be connected to different servers. All right. <clears throat> so you have to think: is, Are they? Go, are, you, are you having a, your special network, your own farm of servers, or are you using the clouds? And all. A function of money, function of surface, function, you understand, okay? Uh, mobiles, so the apps or browser-based in interfaces. Are you having an app in the mobile or in a computer or just a web browser or both or all, okay? The gateway, a real-time data communication, filtering, security, compression, compression, <coughs> compression, com compress the data to make it less, okay? Security issue is a big issue, so how that will play in the whole game, okay? So for example, if you're creating a device for, for ill people, for sick people, to connect them with their doctors, what is the one of the most important factors that you have to think of? Security and the privacy. Security and privacy. If you have if you have a system that's working with your chickens and your farm, maybe security you don't, you don't care about the security of your chickens and pigs and all of that, right? Okay. But when you deal with the human security, so will not fly. If you have the best system with no security and privacy, it will never go. It will never pass the regulations, anyways. The government will not allow it. Okay. But when you, when you come talking about security, encryption, decryption, compression, that will make it a complex system. All right? So you see how much, when I tell you truly, IoT is a technology integrator. It's a technology integrator, okay? Definitely for any product, is not one person. You have to work in a group, okay? You have to have a talent. So even when you have your, your budget, part of it hiring people. Hiring people, when you present your budget to investor, okay, big, 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 not big, 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 big of the money is to hire people. To do all of this, right? All right? Three wireless hardware, uh, hardware development options. None. Use standalone terminal or approved modules or chipset. Chipset. Chipsets, yeah. 
uh, you could you, you could use. All right. Then important things that let you take the customer's money. It's all about IoT is all about data. Data. And working in IoT is about all about money. Okay, that's what you're, you're gonna bring a product, right? You're gonna make a money, right? Okay. I mean, if, if you're talking about like application living and all of that, right? So. So you have to have the approvals, so the government regulations. And maybe you need to hire an attorney, okay, specialized in this area. Industrial requirements. There's regulations in the industry that you have to follow. Again, maybe a law, a law office will help you. Carrier requirements. Then you have to have the production. Okay, the production, you have sourcing, quality assurance, configuration management. When you do the, okay, all this part of the production, development or deployment. What are the logistics for deployment? Sales, channel de development, support, after you deploy your products, right? Like this problem, this is like a device, right? After I purchase it, I have a problem. That's it? There is 800 number, there is support. So when you are in the market, if you want to live longer, if you want to live longer, you have to have a great, 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 Support. Right? Who gonna pay for it? You. Where are you gonna fund it from? From the profit you're gonna collect. Right? So when you sell the product to the people, okay, you have to, to factor that, to factor that, because you have to, you know, do all that, right? So this is cost you cost you ten ten dollars, you sell it for twelve dollars, but it's gonna cost you three dollars for support, and you're losing money. Alright? Alright, so example of timelines, okay, so the business and application definition, three to nine months. That's my guess. Three to nine months it's gonna take. Alright? But definitely not years. If you start thinking of a product or an idea and you're going to spend three, five years, you know money, how many Chinese will know it before you, will make it before you? Okay? All right? So, and you better not to talk to anybody about it. Okay? Because, you know, nowadays, idea worth money. Okay? So you have an idea, you go talk, talk to social, and social, you know, he talks to everybody, you're dead. You're dead. You never benefit from from that, right? And then after that trial surface, three to nine months. Implementation, one to three months. And why is it possible in one to three? It depends on the product, first of all. And because if you get a use off the shelf, and because you're gonna hire specialized people. You're gonna spend one million, two million, three million dollars on that. Right? All right. Then after that design, three to fifteen months, regulations. It takes up to six months. I mean, to work with the government. You know how the government's law. And after the government shut down, if you are unlucky and you start <laughs> applying for these regulations, with the government shut down, that will be awful, right? And then after that, production and deployment and the, uh, the deployment. Um, so, yes. My, my only comment would be, I think maybe even that uh, regulatory and certification period might be a little bit shorter. You think I, so? I, yes. My experience is just to get the UL certification took at least six months alone. At least? At least. So you think it should be longer? I think it should be six to twelve months, personally. Six, six to? Six to twelve. To twelve. I agree. I agree. I, I agree. I mean, you know, I think it needs longer than that. All right? But this is then again my estimate, my estimation. So you know, okay. So um, where is the money? Okay. So connected car shipment are expected to reach 60 million units by 2018. You see, I'm lazy. I did not even update my slides. Okay. Okay. And this is for this is source. M to M value created in in 2013 by Cisco it says. You know, it's like supply chain is 158 billion, customer experience 145 billion, innovation 110 billion, 
asset utilization one oh nine billion, employee productivity in eighty nine billion. So there is a lot of products is going on. In the government connected cities, for example, I have visited a, a smart city, and all all of us are, are attending that smart uh, the smart city presentation yeah. next week, right? Yeah. I attended myself a city in uh, in Italy, smart city in Italy. It's wonderful, small city, okay. Everything is connected. You went to the Padova? Padova. Huh? You went to Padova? Padova? No, you, different one, different smaller one? one in the north. I forgot the name. Okay. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> but there's a few smart. I mean, my idea was initially I need to create a smart school of engineering. You know, everything will be smart. The windows, the, the doors, everything will be smart and all of that. But you know, even to create one building as smart is very costly, right? Okay, let's just start with ECT, make our lab as a smart, and then we'll move on, right? Maybe smart and smart. There's, I heard a few smart campuses also, just Google it, okay? So it's going, I mean, that's the future, believe me. I mean, you know how it is nowadays, okay? You remember when iPhone started? I mean, myself, I did not purchase it. I said, what a stupid device. Okay, I was one of the last people to purchase it, but nowadays I can't live without it, right? Okay? So, I mean, that once, once like this, you'll see every campus become, could become smart. And then the city, and, you know. So it's coming, it's coming. Just, you know, I think the major delay is because of security. Yeah. Security and, you know, privacy and all of this. Okay. And the government. Okay, anyways. So, uh, so in, industries uh, impacted. What are the industries impacted? Manufacturing. Um, so, if you don't mind me asking, are there are, are there examples of, of smart cities here in the United States? Uh, I think so. Let's Google it. I mean, I, I have seen a list. Okay. okay for the world, world, I think there was in. Uh, uh, I did not search it for a while. That was two years ago. Okay. But I think I'm sure there is. If there is not in the United States, that's a problem. Colorado, Boulder, Pittsburgh, yeah. San Francisco for sure. Yeah, yeah there's yeah. quite a few. Yeah. 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 One problem I have myself, I have a problem with names. I don't, you know, I know many students, you know, of mine, they meet with me, I cannot remember their name. Cities, the same thing. I, I visit cities, I forgot their names. I'm not good in names in general. Me too. Yeah. All right. The only names I I I, uh, I I I remember very well people who I love, okay, and that's why I remember my wife's name very well. I cannot forget. Problem if I forget. <laughs> I don't sleep home, so all right. So industries impacted like manufacturing, predictive uh, uh, maintenance, for example, you know, uh, like everything sensors in the manufacturing. So, okay, you could, you, you don't have to check for maintenance. It's all you could do predict with all this, everything is connected. By the way, when you talk to sensors, sensors are all technology. I mean, our cars have sensors since when? 30, 40 years, but they are wired, right? Okay, now my, my wife's car, like uh, my wife's car, uh, whatever, Suburban 17 or 16, Okay, so, I mean, you know, you know they, they read everything in the car. I mean, they read it till you have to go, because it's connected, right? Okay, my car is an older car. Nobody knows anything on it, right? But that's the future. I mean, like sensors, I mean, there's sensors in your cars, and, and people are able to access, right? If you have a new car, anybody has like 2018, 19 car? Nobody? Me too, I don't. Uh, I don't myself. So. Okay, so all the new cars now, you know, they have this surface, okay, that, you know, I mean, connected. Yeah. Connected, all the, okay. So nothing new, I mean, here, this is an all technology, right? So predictive ma uh, maintenance, uh, transportation, okay, it be uh, the logistics, I mean, like now, all the fleets. Are IoT all the fleets, right? Fleets, you know, all the fleets are. I mean, the the driver does not know what they need when they need to change oil, when they need to fill gas, and all that, all part of the computer and all shared in the cloud, right? So the logistics, like you know, where to go, where to go, all of them connected. I don't know how to explain. Uh, 
productive maintenance also health care and this will be the major 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 issue health care you know the cost of going to the hospital staying in the hospital is a very expensive nowadays you know when before like many years ago when you, when somebody have a surgery they stay a few days right in the hospital nowadays they have open heart going three days four days oh my god I mean you used to be staying a month why because of the improvement in technology okay so even now people like do surgery all of that you don't need to stay in three four four days to check your vitals every one hour you have a device connected to you and report directly to the doctor if your rate goes down if your sugar goes down whatever goes up calls the calls the ambulance for you directly and they come and take you so all of these devices will be will be there it's already there some of them i'm sure they're there right okay so 20 percent of connected devices now my my brother he's an engineer in yale okay in yale hospital okay everything in there is connected now i mean they invest not millions tens of millions every year in technology there okay there is no more papers nobody have papers you know that in the yeah. hospitals all like technology and you know okay. huh? i was in a van today like they all use like Tablets and, stuff. tablets and all of that. Yeah, yeah they don't yeah. use no papers ah, at all. It's gone. That okay. Everything. Even now, nobody okay for the, the blood for anything. It's all automatic with the labels. Eventually, it will be RFID. RFID you could detect. So the RFID you could go to this room. If everything has an RFID in here, tag passively active. Well, when I click, I collect all all the data from all the com I mean about all the computers so now what do we have we, we have like barcode Barcodes. in the barcode you have to go scan one by one scan scan all technology this RFID our passive RFID and okay and in and, 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 and the pharmacies in the pharmacies now okay in the bottles and all of that okay it will be uh, I, I mean you know that the big big CVS they have robots so it's not that people go and do Robot, you just you program it, the robot go over the shelf, take the big bottle, count whatever, put it in the bottle, put the, okay? The big pharmacies now they have robots, okay? That will be the future. And everything will be what? RFID. RFID. RFID, you could scan it from, you know, you know, from distance. Okay, okay. So that's, uh, for example, now, I mean, all of us, we're enjoying what? The tolls. Aren't you enjoying the tolls? <laughs> Not the tolls, I mean, you know, the, the RFID system. Now in New York, for example, before, yeah, you used to have to stop get pay, right? Yeah, right? Now, how is that happening? IoT, RFID. Okay. But I feel like they take just a picture of your plane. If it's you don't have it, but it's scanning an easy pass. Easy pass, easy pass? That, that allows you like, to open this or like literally go. That's, that's RFID. That's RFID, of course. Yeah. The rest is, uh, they take picture of If you page. don't, yes. And they send you the bill. Yes. Okay, so. If that alone is okay. sensing. Can you, imagine, can you imagine now in the future, man, now what if every car in the United States have? What's the unique thing it have? Uh, VIN number. VIN number, right? How about like in the future, every car has VIN number and? RFID ID. So when you go register the car, it has this uh, RFID, and you have one account in the whole United States. How about, sorry to say it, I'm not sure if we are late in the time, how about, how about, that we as a human, they, they put in here, okay, <laughs> tag for you, passive tag, that will be used like social security number, so you'll be scanned anyone. I hope they don't do it. That Oh, yeah. time on your hand. Yeah. So I don't, don't do, uh, yeah, I'll be against yeah. it myself, okay, time. because time. I'm, I'm time. pro privacy, all in pro privacy, you know. But you know, it's possible. There, there's a, there's a, there was a show on CBS. Um, actually, no, it was on, uh, on National Geographic about a company whose I don't know why they did it, but every employee in the company agreed to have RFID barcodes implanted in their arm. True story. <laughs> and they can monitor them throughout the entire company. They can't hide. Yeah. And apparently everybody likes it because they interviewed all the employees and they said they were all for it. Yeah. I thought it was horrifying, frankly. <laughs> My, I hate it. <laughs> Myself until now, I'm not accepting it. I'm not accepting until now. I don't feel in my heart I'm accepting it. But hey, 
if you have a good president that dictates it to you, okay, we have to, to, to accept it, right? So he's gone in four years. That's <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. so everything is possible, right? So anyways, let's finish quickly this. Uh, I mean, these topics we could discuss. I mean, if we're going to talk about, for example, healthcare and give every youth 10 minutes, everybody will have an idea. Okay, I'm sure. It's a nice discussion, though. And believe me, every time I teach this class, I learn from the students more than they learn from me. Always there's a great ideas. Always like people have, you know. So that's why I tell you, in this class, I feel I am the student always, learning from, from you, okay? So when you go to the energy, okay, for the AC and, you know, the heat and all of that. Okay, nowadays, IoT, I mean, it's already there, right? Okay, the some rich houses now, everything is connected to IoT. So you start the AC remotely, you start the heater remotely, you know, everything is connected to one click from anywhere in the whole world, right? You could, yourself, by the way, if you need to connect your house, you go home, you would buy some equipment, you just remove your, your like, uh, heat, heat, what they call it, uh, thermostat. Oh, thermostat, but one smart one, you yes. could control it, for, you, could do, you could do that now. The technology is there. But think about now everything in your house is connected, all right? Smart to grid, okay. Uh, farming. Farming, it would be a big, 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 big issue, all right? One of the problems, for example, what they call pesticides, whatever, you know, yeah, these things, okay, people are complaining about because sometimes you need it, but if it's too much, it will become a problem for a human when they use it. So now you could have a sensor to control the light, control the, these chemicals you give to the plants, and, and, and you could have constant measure to, to dirt, you know, how much of these chemicals it have, and all of that. Especially now people are interested in something called organic, right? So how you, big, big market, big market it will become. All right, then business environment, many types of players. There is MNO, MVNO, MVNE. Myself, I forgot what, what these stand for, but I wrote them for you in here. Mobile network operator, MNO, and a mobile virtual network operator, and a mobile virtual network enablers, okay? So some of them work for some of them. Okay, so what kind of system you're gonna use and what company, okay? So it's kind of go, you go to the major company that will provide the wireless communication for T-Mobile, AT&T, or to the bigger or the smaller or whatever, okay? So, um, anyways, so, I explained, I explained them in here, for example. So uh, the MNO, Mobile Network Operator, Okay, then you have the mobile virtual network operator, okay? The mobile network operator, uh, better known as wireless service providers, or the carriers, like cellular companies, and the mobile network carriers. Owns or controls access to radio spectrum license. So it's kind of the biggest, big, the bigger giants. They own the radio spectrum license, um, from uh, a regulation or government entity and the all and control the elements of it all right so may also sell access to network services at wholesale rate to mobile virtual network to the mobile virtual network so yourself if you have like a big 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 market you could work directly with them or otherwise they would refuse to deal with you you have to work with you know the mobile virtual network operator Again, it's like, for example, in here in the business uh, internal IT, you have user company and connected to virtual network one, so cellular one, cellular two, and this like connected to different. So anyway, so what are you seeking? I mean, there is a big, big giants, big players in terms of communication. Which ones you are playing with? Which ones you gonna work with? The, which carriers? So also you have to work with with this. Um, the carrier duties include maintain connectivity of the network and it establish access control, okay, and maintaining the API. So, I mean, again, what, you know, what level you are, you have to know where you fit in the ecosystem, where do you fit in the, 
uh, echo uh, system. Um, um, you know, um, you know. I mean, I mean, you have to know what is the player in in, in the market and where exactly uh, you uh, fit. So, building a business case. Building. Uh, we'll finish in a second. Okay, building a business case. So, it's out of need, right? Out of need. So you have to see the need there. If you don't see the need. If yourself you cannot see the need, you cannot collect the data that there is a need, don't go. Okay, because I mean the idea here is not to have a product spending like a few hundred thousand dollars just to be to brag about it, right? It's to sell it, to make money. So the need and the objective. So usually the need and the objective, you know, contradicting or working together depends on the situation. Okay? So you're gonna build a project out of these two. And then always, always, always you have to weigh between, you have to balance between the cost and the benefit. Why you have to balance them, the cost and benefit? Because what's your goal? A great ROI, return on investment, okay? The higher the ROI, that's your goal, okay? Return on investment, the better. So, so you have to know the business need driven. So uh, the IoT is a business intrusive. First, a project needed. Uh, start small. Uh, test. You, know, you have to start small and grow. You know, um, cost and revenue. It has to be documentable. Okay, don't be like my great grandfather. Everything in his brain. That's why every trade he enter, he lose. Okay, or you know, it does not make money. Okay, so everything has to be documentable because there are so many things that you have to pay for. Okay, whether small or big, and sometimes you underestimate them. Like we mentioned, for example, support. If you underestimate the support that you need after that, you go bankrupt. Okay, and what, what, what will make it more harder? It's very hard to estimate sometimes. Mm -hmm. Right? So you have to hire the experts sometimes to, to help you in that. So somebody uh, accountable, who will be accountable? So everybody work for you or with you has to be accountable somehow. What is the best way to make people accountable? To make a, to, to, to give them some of the stake. To have them invest, yeah. Invest. All right? All right, that's that's you know, that's the best way. It's not that as as employees, as investors, as partners, right? Okay, but if you were so sure about your product, an idea will make you trillions of dollars, and why you need to share, uh, you understand. I mean, how it goes, you have to balance it. Okay, um, uh, embody account, uh, somebody's accountant, employee time, always, also one thing you underestimate the employee time. If you hire, if you hire engineer, okay, if, okay, for hundred thousand dollars a year. This engineer will get hundred thousand dollars a year, whether you make money or you don't make money, right? So you have to know what, what are materials, okay? What kind of materials? Then hard to quantify. What staff re redeployment? It's very hard to quantify. Uh, improvement in customer uptime, a new product service opportunities. Okay, this is hard to. There's something you could quantify something, even you cannot. Um, Think of. All right. Uh, you would like us to have a break, or yes? Yeah, let's have a break. Thank you. So we'll continue as as we were to talking, you know, uh, about you know um, the building, the business case. So need the objective, the project we have to weigh the benefit and the cost, and <laughs> ultimately what you need, the ROI. Can you see or you need the lights off? No, we're good. We're good. Okay. It's better. All right. Uh, okay, so um, so you have to look at your monthly bill. Okay, so for example, communication charges. I mean, is it monthly attachment fee? What is the data charges? So if, if for example, if your application depends on trusting video, that's a lot of data, right? Okay. Voice, it's also a lot of data. Is it just simple text? So, this will be a factor in your monthly bill. Okay, what will be the bill? Okay, 
what are the data charges are you depending on SMS charges rather than you know you know different way so the what are the platforms and other SaaS charges surface you know uh, you know uh, uh, the support and logistics the support and the logistics the customer charges uh, customer facing software maintenance the billing who gonna do the billing billing just billing the people is another billing for you. Some people have to do it, right? Collecting the money and all of that. Inventory and management. So there is a lot of things that you have to handle uh, when you go to that far. I know that in this class, you're not going that far. I hope you will. Okay, that you're going to have your idea, you're going to have your investor, you're going to build your own company and all of that. I truly hope, if not this year, next year, over two years or whatever. I truly really hope. I wish you all the best. Okay, uh, but uh, maybe it's not during this class, but I wanted to cover this stuff just to be aware of it. So you might listen to me now, you forget about it, but when you are at that stage, please go back at this slides and, yes. Okay, keep going. I don't want to interrupt you. Yeah, um, and, 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 you know, yeah. Right. My, my question is, all that stuff seemed great as far as running a business, but in terms of IoT, the uh, discussion about the communication charges, would, would that have a direct impact in terms of like the use of particular technology used for doing the communication absolutely, for the IoT device? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, like if you have a device, for example, to monitor your children anywhere. Yeah. Okay. So, how are you going to communicate with them anywhere? <coughs> it has to have, for example, like cellular communication. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're going to have this SIM, right? This SIM, where do you get it from? From T-Mobile, AT&T, and all of that. Yes, you're not going to pay for it like $50 a box like your cell phone, but maybe like 10 bucks for data, right? Okay. okay. So when you're selling a product for $20 and the customer needs to pay $10 a month, like $120 a year for communication, would it be a factor for him to purchase it or not? Yeah. Okay. okay. I'll give you an example. For example, all my children have the iPad. You know it's iPad, right? Yeah. And when I purchased them, I purchased them with a SIM. So I paid like extra hundred dollars, hundred twenty dollars, to have the SIM. Okay. So when I went to T-Mobile, they need ten dollars per month. Okay, for the SIM. This is like thirty. I have three children, three thirty dollars a, a month, just for the SIM to be. I said, forget about it. So I already purchased them. I did not even purchase the SIM. Thirty dollars a month. You know that's. Uh, I mean, the problem is, you know, what's a major problem we have in our lives? Okay, actually, our wives have this problem. Okay, <laughs> that our salaries are annual, so if, let's say that you make hundred thousand dollars, right? Sure, okay. But when we calculate the bills, we calculate them monthly, so they don't look much. So, for example, for example, <laughs> right? Okay, l let's say so. So, for example, you know, for a TV, like a cable, how much I pay myself for a cable? I think like hundred thirty dollars, whatever. or Let's say 150, 100 dollars. Let's make it simple. 100. It's more than that with the cable and the internet and all the 100 dollars, right? So it's you know, only 100 dollars, but the reality is not only 100 dollars. It's 1200. It's a 1200 a year. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And that's the bills. All the bills, we, we calculate them as like monthly, but our salaries are okay. So when you compare 100 to 100,000 dollars, nothing, 100. But when you compare, you start like hitting yourself, you know, okay? <laughs> and, and, and internet you need and all of that, okay? But, you know, think about stupid things to subscribe to, okay? So for example, when you go to the gym, for example, myself, I subscribe many times to the gym. It has nothing to do with the class, by the way. Okay? <laughs> uh, no, I keep it. Okay, with the gym, right? So I, I remember the first time I subscribed to the gym, it was like $60 a month. Okay? $60 a month. I went it twice for a year. Okay? <laughs> twice for a year. Okay? So, so you, you know, $60 a month. Okay, it's only $60. But it's not a $60, it's 60 times 12. Oh my God, when you look at it, you spend like over $700 for two times. So each time you went to the gym, you spent how much? <laughs> <laughs> All right, 
And so, and, and, and you know, I, I quit the gym. Then after two years, I said, um, you know, a little bit obese in this area, let me subscribe. So I, I, I was looking for the most cheap one. It was like $15 a month. I was so happy, $15 a month. I went like 10 times in two years. Okay, again, when you do the math, <laughs> when you do the math, you, you, you know, you, you understand. The same thing in here is much worse. Okay? So, so when you calculate the income annually, you have to calculate the expense annually. Sure. Okay? Otherwise, it's not going to work. So when you look at the billing for the bandwidth, bandwidth, I mean, your device, is it working with Wi-Fi? That's good. It's work. I mean, if, you, if your device is going to work in your house, then you don't have to worry about all of this. Why? Because every house now has a Wi-Fi. And you connect to through it, right? All right? It was a problem maybe 20 years ago, 50 years, not everybody had a Wi-Fi at that time, right? But now everybody has a Wi-Fi. So it's a device works in, in the house. Okay, let, let's say that it's like, like a device works in your refrigerator that tells you, gives you inventory what your refrigerator has. Send it to your whatever, iPad or iPhone, whatever, right? Good, all right? But if that device has to be mobile, so Wi-Fi works? Does not work. Okay, does not work. Okay, so, okay. Well, I mean, well, every, all of us have like now unlimited like data support, or whatever. So you could connect your device with hotspot hot in UK. Okay, but if what if yeah, it's mobile, uh, movable or mobile, but it's not always with you, nearby you, your, your network. So you have to have a way to connect it. So you're gonna have the SIM card, ten dollars, whatever. So definitely, and then also these things it goes with, with it depends on the volume of data, right? So you could have a very very cheap subscription if you have very little data, right? So right, okay. So all of this, I mean, it's, it's negotiation. Yeah? So for for billing for bandwidth, okay. The option one, charge for subscription service, like you want. You pay fifty dollars. That's it every month, okay. Or include connectivity in a price surface per product. Or connectivity is seen as business expense, connectivity as business expense that is not passed to the customer. So you are charged for that, not the customer. Or it could be low key be free with a large charge for triggered events. So depends on the events and all that. So different ways. Uh, charge for subscription surface. All right, so generate revenue by subscription, base surface, depending on data usage. So you charge as much as you use, okay? Or a single usage plan. Example, uh, M Health and Home Monitoring. This is like subscription services. The option to include connectivity in a price, okay? There's two A, two B. Build the cost of the usage into the downloading of the content. Example like Kindle and e-reader. Connectivity included in the, the device, no charge to the customer. Example, smart grid meter. Smart grid meter, I mean, like, you know, they don't charge you for that. They collect the data. That's what we have in our houses nowadays, mm -hmm. all right? And there's option, option uh, uh, three, which is connectivity is a business expense. So you, as a business, eat it. Okay, you pay for it. Okay, connectivity is seen as a business expense that is not passed on to the customer. All right, so somebody has to count for it, okay? And then low uh, keep alive free with large, larger fee for triggered events. So only charge when there is an event, you need to use it, but of course, because it's not like a monthly contract or like, you know, continuous contract is per event. Yeah, it's per event, but you know, Whenever you use it, you get a pay for it. Okay? So which one is good, which one is not good? Depends. Depends. Okay. The revenue trend, uh, okay, the, the IoT average revenue per user, okay, RPU, are typically less or less than 10% of what opera operators achieve from their handset customers. So anyway, so... Um, uh, the RPU, 
as you see, it decreases as we as the uh, as the revenue increases. For the implementation strategy, what are business and application demands? I already maybe covered that uh, somewhere, like what is the unit volume, what the data characteristics, the geographical considerations is important. Uh, technologies do, what technology do you need? Are you going to use cellular communication, like I mentioned, or other wireless technique, or sensors, and other equipment and equipment? There's so many options. Depends again in your application. I, I mean, what I want you while you're reading this stuff or listening to this stuff, I'm sure you already have an idea or you thought about what you're gonna do for your project. You should, right? Right? Some of you already have like some idea, right? So while you're listening to this or reading this, where it doesn't apply to me. Okay, if my project, my idea to fly, I'm going to make it, where does it apply for me? You were talking about smart parking meters or something like that. So, okay, we're, 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 okay. Th think about it. Usually sometimes, you know, when you take on a project and try to see how this applies, you'll understand it more. Some, some of it does not apply at all, so that's fine. Okay, what system components do you need? Do you need mobile application? Okay, mobile. And we know mobile is different than something called wireless. Every mobile is wireless, but not every wireless is mobile. Mobile, okay, application. Do you need server software? Does it collect data that you need to have a server or a cloud that you collect the data? Okay, how much? How big? What kind of data? Big data. Okay, uh, do you need a gateway, customer hardware, custom hardware, uh, carrier, uh, API, or over the top, a ready software that over the top, you run it, okay? I don't understand over the top. What is that? Over the top? The same as plain English, what does it mean? It means like, you know, application already available, just to use it. Okay. So for, for, exa for example, okay, if you have like uh, um, uh, 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 manufacturing, Okay, you could go design your own software for what you manufacture or use AutoCAD. AutoCAD is an application, it's over the top. Something ready that you could use. You used to use. call it canned. Huh? You used to call it canned. Same thing. Yeah, same. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, when you talk about wireless technology selection, okay, the criteria. So the, what are the criteria? The data rate, so what are the volume of data and what is the latency? We forget about the latency. That's why G, G5 or 5G, okay, will be very important for many applications because the latency, the delay, okay, and the jitter is very, very long. All right, so for many applications will be applicable, okay. so. There is a, I'll give you an example. I mean, let's say about application that you, you know, you monitor your door at your house for delivery. Somebody knocks in the, in, in the, in the, in the bell, you'll see it in your cell phone. All you have to do, watch the camera, so you have to have live stream and activate the bell, you know, the door, okay? So if that, there is a lot of latency, okay, that'd be a problem, right? Maybe, right? Think about the device that, you know, monitor your heart rate that whenever you have like low rate or high rate or high blood, whatever, some of it you're vital. And there's a lot of delay, that's a problem, right? So latency is a big issue. We always think about the volume and latency. Latency also problem is sometimes in the video streaming. If there's a, so you have to think in your application. Do you graphic reach? So what are the carrier support, the frequency bands, and the mobility of the solution? The cost, what is the hardware, connect charges, data charges, certification, certification in the government not cheap. There is fees monthly, annual fees, there's all of that. So you have to think about all of this. So for example, when it comes to certification, you could have a whole product, you don't think about certification, whether it will be done or not, and what are the cost. And it might end up like a big, big fee, okay? 
when you look at the similar technology, okay, so, I mean, anybody did the mobile communication with me? No? Uh, you're doing right now, right? Uh, uh, I am uh, like IEEE, uh, uh, wireless certified professional, okay, so I, I have the highest certification in wireless communication in the country from IEEE, so I'm not sure you know, you know about these technologies, so all of these is like a whole story. I mean, we live through them, that's how we started, that's how we evolved until now, a 5G, right? Okay, but you know, I mean, it, you know, uh, you know. Generally, we have the three GBB and the three GBB two technologies. This is GSM, whereas in you know in Europe and all of that, and CDMA was being in the United States. Anyways, evolve. Each one of them has different characteristics. I mean, all of them. If you go on the certification exam, you should know them exactly in details how they work. Okay, doesn't matter for you. It matters. There is a different technologies. All of these are history, from here history, now we're dealing with the 4G, okay, uh, LTE and the 5G. This is the area we're going to work. This is different technologies from the, the best, right? Can I ask a question? Yes. Where is the 3GPP? Huh? Where is the 3GPP? The third generation partnership project? Yeah. Is this like a norm or something? Norm? No, it's not a norm. It's a project started by, by a group. Okay, we started with GSM. At that time, a parallel group started with GBP2 where they work in CDMA. Okay. And they evolved. It's a group. It's a group. It's a group. A group, not a technology, yes. Okay. So they came with these technologies. Are they responsible about like standardization? Yes. And stuff? Yes. Part of it, yes. Okay. They are part of the standardizing group. I mean, mm -hmm. there is a bigger group for standardizing. So technology evolution bandwidth, you know, GSM started not with 200 kilohertz. And, you know, GMSK is like, you know, modulation and all that. This technology is like, you learn it in mobile communication, you don't have to worry about it. Then CDMA, then multi, or CDMA, then wideband CDMA, and LTE, okay? I mean, you have to, to take wireless communication to understand these terms. You don't have to. But they are big story. I mean, each one of them is a different technology, and basically that's how we evolved. Okay, all right. And you know, um, well, basically a different kind of modulation for each. Exactly. So when you look at the data rates again, I mean, for you right now, of course, I mean, uh, you are not using the age or the GRPS or all of these or. Maybe LTE and LTE Advanced, which is like 4.5, whatever. And then you have the 5G. Okay. <coughs> so you're going to talk about the down uh, kilobits per second. And up. now we're talking about megabits per second. Okay. So again, I mean, this is like a history. Okay. But, but you know, still, when, with this, what kind of download rate do you need? Because okay, for your one. application, right? Okay. Is it. I, mean, I don't think it's anything anymore in kilobits per second, but you know, if, if you purchase kilobits per second, it would be cheaper. But maybe you know, you know, mostly now it's megabits per second, so it's higher, or gigabits per second. All right, and oh, the actually, design of uh -huh. just one information like we still use the, the previous technologies, like for GSM, GPS, yeah, like the phone calls is through like uh, the 2G, sure, sure, like even even for smartphones, they still use the 2G for sure. The phone calls. I agree. Okay, so also like you know, you know, you have the smart antennas, so multiple Most input, multiple output antennas, the smart, you know, and this is again different technology, I'm not going to talk about it in this class, okay, <coughs> but seriously, if you are the engineer or developing the, the device, let's say that you're developing in here, so what kind of antenna, I mean, uh, mm -hmm. antenna in here, okay, uh, you need to understand what is memo or uh, multiple input, multiple out antennas, multiple you know antennas, um, you know uh, different technologies. Um, huh? Go ahead. Should we consider them to be just all this to be just black boxes and just sure? Just I, mean, I mean, definitely. That's what I said. Just for your project, so that's what you're doing anyways, right? Unless you go deep in one of them, uh, you know, for your research project. But definitely, for example, the lab project, uh, you are mostly using Wi-Fi yeah. or whatever, so you don't have to, uh, you know. Um, so other than the big picture, like the speeds and latencies, we really don't need to know the 
the ins and outs of the technology. No, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. Of course, I mean, if you are having your own product, okay, it's money. If your product means that speed and you providing this speed, you lose your money. money. Believe me, I mean, the data, data rate, or it's, it's a lot of money. I mean, uh, you know, especially if you have money. Anyways, uh, frequency division, duplex, and time division. I, I, I mean, this technology and wireless communications, if you take the wireless mobile. Anybody from electrical engineering here? One? I'm the only one. You're electrical engineering? Yeah, I'm the only one electrical. I, what, what, what are, who are computer science here? About you? Computer engineering. Computer engineering. How about you? Computer engineering. Engineer. Okay. Usually engineers are smarter a little bit than... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, like, you do have a class that I took, it, the data and the one that you talked about like, yesterday, yeah. data and computer it's communication. It's yeah. They cover all of these things. Yeah. The modulation, the, the, the frequency bands, the everything. Yeah, to, to not, not that deep though. I teach the course. Well, at least the idea, but... <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Uh, cellular frequency band issue, why do you care? Why you do care? Mm -hmm. So it affects that module vendors um, uh, vendors mm -hmm. offering. So each, ba each band associated with one or more carrier, does their offering cover enough of your target spectrum carriers? More flexibility. Cellular gives you more flexibility, but it's more mm -hmm. dollar from you. Right. If you have Wi-Fi, you have one subscription a month, whatever in your house, and use it, right? Right. So uh, inventory control issue. Antenna technology affected. So usually what kind of antenna are you going to use? Is it external antennas or internal antennas? Um, the, um, um, anyways, uh, non-cellular non technology could work. Okay, like Wi-Fi, Zigbee, uh, wireless heart, RFID, okay, depends on the application. Again, there's a lot of options that you can use, a lot of options that you, but, uh, yes. All right, well, um, the thing about the Bluetooth LE, that's only going to be for short distance. Sure. Now, if you're trying to, maybe that can be incorporated in some aspect of the design. Sure. But it's going to be, have to be combined, I would imagine, with other technologies to do communication across the globe or whatever. Well, I mean, if your application that you need is a device in your house, it would be it's short range anyway, right? Yeah. So it depends on the application. Okay. It's so just it, another ingredient you can have. Exactly. Okay. I mean, uh, it depends on in your application that you're going to use. I mean, there's a lot of factors. I'm trying to go fast right now. So when you talk about non-cellular, you have the Wi-Fi. And Wi-Fi by itself, there's many technologies, different technologies, right? Are you going to briefly discuss those later in the course about the different technologies for this? Uh, no. Okay. No. Uh, if I have time, but I have a lot of material. I have like 20 presentations in this class. What course is that covered in? What the uh, wireless communication. Modern wireless communication. Wireless you wireless can only have a Google for the yeah. Yeah. class. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. I mean, I mean, this is a wireless communication. We cover all of these things in wireless communications. All right. I have the videos from my class that we'd like to watch. I have the, the PowerPoint. I have the slides, you could watch it. Okay. okay. So in here, you see, this is this explains a lot. So the data rate, for example. Okay, when you took the data rate, for example, for Zigbee. It's not a lot. It's a sensor, like a sensor. All right? Okay. If you look at the data rate for 3G, and it's okay. For Wi-Fi, it's much more smaller than 3G, 4G. Now the Zigbee, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, okay. Uh, ultra wideband. Okay, it's ultra wide band. So, so this is like span more more band, and here you see the data rate. So what you need, you have to know what kind of application you are using. So for example, if you're doing a video streaming, Zigbee will be too small. Okay, maybe you need 5G or Wi-Fi, and the new Wi-Fi maybe is bigger now, the N or whatever it is. Okay, so we have to know what basically what is what does this tell you? Tell you that you have to know all available, okay, and you have to find the best fit, not more, not less. If it's less, then it's less surface you provide. If it's more, it's more money you pay. 
You agree? Okay. So uh, look at this. The oh, this is very interesting. So for example, when you look at the hardware considerations, all right, what you consider for the hardware? You consider, for example, robustness, environmental, hardware price, sensitivity, antenna, and hardware type. I'm not sure if you can see. So let's take a look at this. Very interesting. So, so for industrial, for example, what kind of robustness are you going to need? Severe. And industrial, they have the money to buy a very robust, you know, robust device. But for a customer, for a customer at home, moderate. Moderate. I mean, your product, is it for industry or is commercial? or for a consumer at home. It will make a big difference in the parts you're gonna buy. Okay, when you talk about the environmental, so in the industry, se severe to moderate. In commercial, moderate to benign. And in consumer, it's moderate. When you look at the hardware price sensitivity, are you sensitive to the price of the hard hardware that you're purchasing? When it comes to the industry, it's insensitive. They have money. Just give them the most strong, the most robust product, they'll pay for it. No problem. But for you at your home, is the price sensitive? Very sensitive. Right? You have to think who is your customer? Who is the end customer? When you look about the antenna, for industry, internal or external, I mean, it's in the industry, in the factor. If this device, has like antenna from here to the sky, does it matter? It's just in the factory, all right? But if there's a device for you as a consumer and has antenna like two meters that you have to put it in your pocket, <laughs> does it work? It's not an option, right? So the antenna, it has to be internal for other reasons, security, you know, and all, all of that has to be, okay? Okay, talk about the commercial for that. It's external. What do you mean by commercial? For antenna, commercial antenna. Uh, industries like factories, like industry, like okay. No, no, commercial commercial yeah. is like stores. Okay. okay, it's not like manufacturing, but like stores, like in stores and offices. Okay, still commercial. They have more money than okay. end consumers. Okay, right. And why would they want an external? It it could be external commercial. I don't know. It could be external. Could be internal. Okay. Okay, but it does not does not doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay, in the hardware type, it could be device or module. It could be device or module. It could be device or chipset. Chipset means small. Small. When you have a chipset, it's a smaller. Okay, for the application. So you could argue any of these, right? Argue any of these. Okay, but this is in general, right? Okay, so we could argue all that. So these, like, you could have like a device, you could have a chipset there, you know. Uh, hardware consideration also line uh, life of, of, of in the field. Industrial, they're looking for a device live for up to 20 years. But usually the consumer, any device, even your iPhone. Do you have iPhone lives for more than five years? So three to five years. Okay, after that, you know that. Okay. So that means you have to build a device that live it 20 years, you're going to pay a lot of money for it. Okay? Maintenance and, and, and strategy. So in industry, you need on-site annual. Okay, on-site. So you have a, 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 a contract for maintenance. They come on-site. But for, for consumer, it's like a double warranty. It's over the phone. It's, it's like, you know, you know, it's less than this. Industry, when they have their device break, they need to fix it the same day. And the consumer, you know, less sensitive, right? For the inst inst installation, you have to hire an integrator, somebody to come to install an integrator. For consumer, like your iPhone, when you have your iPhone, do they send the person to install it for you? <laughs> when they ship you, when, when they send your phone by iPhone by more or more, do you expect somebody to come with it to install it for you? No, it's by user, right? So for, for consumer, you have to design it in a simple way that the, the, there's no cost, there's no labor to install it, right? Carrier support, one or many, one or one, one. Anyways, so there's a lot of things, a lot of factors. Uh, so when you build your system, okay, you have to know what does it need. 
Okay, how it will function, how you're gonna build it, what is available in the market, in terms of hardware, in terms of software, in terms of Communication. communications, right? So all of these things that you have to, 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 to uh, and other stuff, and other stuff that you have to take care of it. So uh, again, this is, you go back to it when you start designing your, so when you write your report about your project, you have to add just all of these things. Okay. That's like a business model. Sorry, like for the. Are you talking about the, cash, the project? The, the project, thing? yes. Yeah. It should be like a business model. It should not. Because you said covering everything, marketing, finance, and stuff. It should not. Okay. This is very short to be a business model. I know. Okay. I mean, business model is much complex. But you're saying it should have these ingredients you go to. Sure, when you write your report, I mean, you have to address many of these issues, right? Okay. So, for example, you, you, you choose, for example, in your project that you're going to use Wi Fi. Maybe in a half a page, you have to explain why Wi Fi will work for your project mm -hmm. or not. You could write the right thing is for this project, for this product, to be solar connection in the future. But because it's a prototype, we started with, you understand, you're an engineer. Okay, engineer. Not everything we do is perfect. Not every because not because we don't know. Sometimes because we don't have the budget, we don't have the, the money, we don't have you know the support. We don't have it, but we have to explain it. Engineers are good at what? Good in what? Usually, nothing. <laughs> good, good in explaining things and making logic, right? That's what they they, they should, right? That's what it is. So uh, we'll continue. Okay, in, in, in these things, we're going to start technical. Okay, we're going to start technical with the protocols related to IoT very soon. Okay, um, so we'll, we'll move on. I mean, I mean, if you look at the things we're going to talk about, this is class. So, I mean, this is maybe the last one we'll talk about, like business model and all of that. But if you look in here, for example, I'm not sure we covered the free architecture. Did you cover three architecture, guys? No. no? That, that was the snow day. Okay, you take a look at it then. Okay, then support and management. Uh, then we're gonna talk next time. Uh, next time, maybe about the. Uh, no, where, 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 where is where? Yeah. Why is it like that? Okay, next time it will be no class. Actually, we'll be in the conference. I understand. Okay. So in here, we covered in here, uh, bring in M to M service to market. Then we're going to talk about the hardware, IoT hardware. We're going to talk about testing and certification, which is a very important. We'll talk about support and management. Then we're going to talk about, because nowadays, I mean, like these devices, we call it internet of things. Where they are connected to? Where they are supposed to connect to? Internet. Internet. So, do you think that? Do you think that we can? Uh, do you think that we can uh, connect with I four with IP four? No. Why? No IP is no, okay. 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 So we have to learn about IP six. So you're gonna again. Okay. To teach you about IP6, some of you might know IP4, so I'm going to talk about IP4, then I'm going to jump into IP. Can you see? Yeah. Oh, that's why That's why you are not cooperative. You can see, right? Okay. <laughs> then we're going to talk about, okay, where am I? IP4, IP6. Yeah, um, uh, IoT hardware, then testing, uh, support, then IP4, IP6. We're going to talk about the protocol 6 low pan, okay. how it works. We'll talk about Ripple, and then it will clear. We'll talk about the co-op. We'll talk about the ZigBee and triple E eight or two fifteen. We'll talk about RFID. We'll talk about software defined networks. We'll talk a little bit about the big data. Why we need to talk about big data? Because it's all about data. So we'll, we'll we just we'll, we'll touch what our technology is there for big data and all of that. Then we'll try to talk about wireless sensor network. Okay. Okay. Uh, NFV, uh, okay, and wireless, uh, what is this? Position and uh, location. Okay, a lot of topics. I mean, and again, it's a technology integrator. So, and here, what I need you just to open your eyes. Open your eyes. Uh, different technologies that you know, you know, the concepts of it and all of that. So, if you decide to focus on one area, it's 
that's your call in Code of Law. So there's a lot of things, and they have many other topics that I would love to cover in here, but I don't think I will have time. But we're going to do all these? Yes, at least. Are they going? Are they all published on the, on the canvas? Yes, I think so. They're all there already? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Any questions? So if we were to do some work on our own, which one should we cover by now so we're up to date on our own? We today will finish for uh, uh, IoT, bring, uh, bring M2M service to the market. So the first six? The first four. We'll finish the first four. Okay. Okay, so we still, still have to go. All right, I think I finished on time, All right. as I promised.